Gobda's view, Peliod had undergone a stunning transformation right before his eyes. Pleased to meet you, I am Peliod, the queen who governs the insect realm. This Peliod held the position of viceroy among the insectors and was unquestionably the queen ruling over the insect generals. With her true identity revealed, Gopta's chances of victory seemed utterly hopeless. Please, this isn't the time for jokes, Gopta muttered involuntarily, expressing his true sentiments. This goes beyond mere strength now. Discussing our power advantage is irrelevant. So, what's our plan? We have no option but to retreat. Gopta, you sense her danger, don't you? Yes, but running away alone doesn't seem like a wise choice. Ranga's perspective seemed to align with Gopta's. Had they faced the Peliod they'd battled earlier, victory might have been possible depending on their strategy. However, the current Peliod was an entirely different league. She surpassed all the insect generals in power, including Zess, the leader Kara was confronting. Enough chatter. Your actions remain the same, despite your appearance. Karian opted for his most formidable technique, the beast roar, without hesitation. He transformed into willful particles and closed in on the towering Peliod. It happened in an instant. Peliod didn't move, but it wasn't because she couldn't. She didn't need to. Her breath turned into a toxic mist, enveloping Karian in his particle state, sapping his kinetic energy and rendering him immobile. Yet, Frey didn't anticipate Karian's defeat at this point. She used Karian's attack as a diversion, soaring behind Peliod. Then, Frey took action. I'll have to restrict your movements, Frey announced, capturing Peliod with her Garuda Claw. Her Garuda Claw could neutralize any opponent's abilities, regardless of their source. Or at least, that's what it was supposed to do. Despite the tight situation she should have been in, Peliod smiled and spoke. How pitiful. My offspring was vanquished by such an adversary. What do you mean? Frey inquired, but a forceful blow to her abdomen left her speechless. I see. You're perceptive. Even though that claw weakened me slightly, I could have killed you with just two blows. But now it makes sense. Beyond mere power, you possess significant combat experience. In that case, my children's honor can be somewhat salvaged. I can't believe it. You effortlessly nullified my claw. You truly are an unimaginable monster. Frey too was now convinced that this was a battle where they might meet their end. The same fate seemed to await Karian, lying helpless on the ground. He was so drained that he couldn't even make a sound, let alone fight back. Escaping was no longer an option in this dire situation. Tisk, I hate to admit it, but I never foresaw her being this formidable. Karian regretted not realizing this earlier in the battle. Yet, even if he had, what difference would it have made? He mocked himself, recalling how everyone had underestimated Peliod when she reflected Kara's abyss annihilation back at them. It was a collective fault to have thought of her as a mere mid to long range magic user. Still, it's surprising that even Milam failed to notice. But now I see. Insect Lord Zelanus must be an even greater threat. A shiver ran down Karian's spine, and then he recalled that this was a battle involving Milam. There was only one reason why Milam, an absolute being, wouldn't intervene even in this crisis. It was because of Insect Lord Zelanus, which meant they couldn't count on any help from Milam. So that's the case, damn it. In that case, this war, thinking beyond this point would be unfair to his comrades. Karian acknowledged this and began contemplating what he could still do to assist. Frey was severely injured, though not as badly as Karian. This resolute Frey locked eyes with Peliod. She had resolved to die, recognizing that Peliod, the absolute ruler of this domain, was unstoppable. If that were the case, Peliod would logically target the weakest first, and Frey was prepared for that. I'm sorry, Karian. I wanted to get to know you better, but it seems this is where it ends. Frey made her decision, ready to deliver at least one final strike. However, a man positioned himself in front of Frey. This man, Midley, confronted Peliod to shield Frey. Well, well, that's how it is. The purpose of this special barrier encircling the battlefield is to gather the energy of your fallen comrades. It's not just gathering. I need more power to birth stronger offspring. If they allowed Peliod to escape, she would undoubtedly create more monsters akin to the insect generals they had just defeated. The issue was that they were the ones who needed to escape. In that case, try defeating me first. Midley unleashed his ultimate move, Draconic Cannon. It was an unrestrained, full-power attack that even incorporated the energy of the Earth. A divine blow meant to be used against formidable foes. This was the true essence of Midley, the greater chaos spirit dragon Magin. Regrettably, it had no effect on Peliod. That's an intriguing technique. Learning it would make my offspring stronger. Don't forget about me. Take this too. Gobda leaped out from Midley's shadow and unleashed an apocalypse howling at the opportune moment. Yet, this too, failed. Peliod remained unruffled and simultaneously activated a magic circle to neutralize the apocalypse howling. You're quite overconfident, little bug. 
While Peliod was occupied with Midli and Gopta, Ober was preparing a deadly attack. She unleashed her second planet's bombardment of the day. Unlike Midli and Karian, Ober's existence value was comparable to Peliod's. Hence, this attack should have inflicted significant damage on Peliod, or so they thought. However, they were mistaken. Peliod had everything under her control. There was no time for despair. I shall repay you, Peliod declared with a smile. The meaning of this statement became apparent as a shower of meteorites descended from the heavens. Everybody, brace for impact. Gopta, in his characteristic manner, alerted his friends to the imminent danger via telepathy net. Obra, undeterred, engaged Peliod in close combat after her special attack had failed. Although Peliod had an advantage with her spatial domination against mid- to long-range fighters, she wasn't particularly adept at close combat, as evidenced by her inability to kill Esprit and others. The initial plan had been to psychologically overpower Obra and gain the upper hand, but Obra, experienced in battling cryptids with diverse traits, remained unfazed by some setbacks. While Obra's attitude was a miscalculation, Peliod's advantage remained the same. By spreading death across the battlefield, all that energy would become Peliod's strength. But this is strange, isn't it? I was able to gather the power of my children, but not the power of the others. With this question in mind, Peliod surveyed the battlefield and realized her second miscalculation. The enemy forces, specifically Milam's army, were shielded by Geld and his men. 